So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 12. Today is July the 28th, 2022. So to this on this play shop number 12, I'm going to talk about developing the clairs. So what do I mean by the clairs? The clairs is really this your sixth sense because they are always they are usually called clairvoyant or clairsentient, all those. So so that's why I call them developing the clairs. So, so that's what I mean by the clairs. So as with other um, play shops, I'm just going to actually um, walk you through, you all through the kind of the, the agenda for this evening. So there'll be, so check-in, welcome, and then presence meditation first. And then I'm going to explain what are the clairs and, and then talk about how come we are not all psychics because we all, like these, these six sense, we are all innate abilities that we have. So I'm going to talk about um, how come our innate abilities have been blocked. And then um, talking about how, what we can do to start to unblock those um our abilities okay so let's let's come back here so just want to open up the floor for any questions any um and anything that anybody wants to say before we begin or maybe you have specific uh, interest in a certain area then please let me know so i can cater the rest of the play shop more to you so any feedback special requirements not really okay in that case let's just go into the presence meditation so this presence meditation is because we are really doing energy work developing um, our sixth sense is really about de developing the, those innate energies and getting our energy clearer. So let's do that. Um, let's really facilitate that by becoming present. So present just means that we get all our attention back to ourselves. So let's just take a deep breath in. And let it all go. Relax your body as you breathe out. Take another deep breath in. And when you breathe in, just imagine that you're calling back all parts of yourself back in. And as you breathe out, let go of anything that does not support you in this moment. And then breathe in again. So just breathe in. And set the intention that you want to let go of all the attention that you have sent outside of yourselves. And to consciously bring all of those attention back within yourself. So now is the time to be with yourself. Be with your body, be with your consciousness, and just be here in this moment within yourself, noticing what's going on inside yourself, first and foremost. And also, set the intention that you want to bring back your soul, because sometimes when we are just cruising along during the day, or maybe when we just doing something um, mindlessly, our soul may have wandered off to look at other things, or maybe visit a, um, or not, not a whole soul, but parts of our soul, maybe going out to see what, um, what a loved one's, a daughter, a mother, um, a, a, a beloved uh, sister or brother that may be as far away in a different country. So sometimes part of our soul may just go there and check it out. 
check them out. So now is the time to call all parts of yourself back to you. And also set the intention that you want to be connected with the highest vibration version of you. To connect back with the highest vibration version of you that exists beyond time space. Just so, so that you are really hooked up to the highest possible vibration version of you in this moment. And when you have done that, then just come all the way back into the room. And welcome back. So let's go to look at um, what are the clairs? What are the clairs? So first off, we have five senses. We have the, so we can see, we can hear, we, you know, we have a mouth, so we can not just talk, but we can actually eat and we can taste. So tasting is a one of our senses. And we breathe air in. And so we smell, we have a sense of smell. And then also we have sense of touch. When I touch this um, microphone, then that's the sense of touch. And sense of touch is and then we also can feel. So touching something, I kind of know whether this microphone is hard or soft, but I can also feel emotions. Let's say I feel the emotions within I, myself. And when I touch this, do I have any emotions about it? Or sometimes when I touch, um, let's say a piece of jewelry, so there may be something that is some emotions that's attached to certain objects that we, we touch. So, so those are our five senses. Now, the clairs. So I'm mean, actually just backtrack a little bit is that how, how do we actually see? How do we actually hear? If we don't normally think about actually how can we do that because we and our body just does it for us we actually can see we never even think about how we see and so actually everything is energy and when we when our eyes um catches an image that image actually is simply how our eyes interpret energy that came from outside of us. So it goes into our eyes, the structure of our eyes is a, kind of like a lens and, it, and that kind of creates an image in our brain and our brain interprets those images. And that's really how um, we see, how we make sense of what we see. It's really our, um, the apparatus of our eyes actually interpret those energy. So our clears is really um, senses and that is a little bit more that actually detects subtle energy. So when Sifu James is a very um, powerful clairvoyant, he sees energy. We actually can all see energy. Everybody can see energy. It's just that most of the time we have been, like since, since birth, we've all been trained to focus on things that are um, solid, like, like the body, like the table, the chair. We are trained to focus on those things that our hands can touch and our eyes can see as solid. But well, our eyes actually see more than just solid things. It actually sees the energy. And sometimes when the lights are dim, um, especially if you uh, uh, have practiced doing this, is that we can actually see that it's like 
in front of or around a, a table or a chair. There are actually swirls of energy that is moving around that. It's just that most of the time we are not trained to notice those energy. We, we have been trained to ignore and delete those energy because there's so much information that is hitting our eyes. So we don't notice those things that are subtle. That is not, um, not something that we can put our hands on. So clairvoyant is the ability to see energy and be able to interpret those energies in such, in such a way that we can actually get information from what we see. And um, clear, so, so see, seeing, besides seeing physical objects, we can actually just see energy and be able to interpret those energy. And that's called clairvoyant. And being able to hear, we can, we don't just hear sounds with our eardrums. We can actually pick up on sounds that most people cannot hear. Is, um, for example, dogs can hear beyond the range of human beings. Any dog, not, not special or super dog, but any dog can hear beyond the, the range that human beings' ears can pick up. And actually we can hear beyond those range as well. It's just that most of the time, again, through training that we only focus on a certain bandwidth that we can hear, that we can see like the, the um, our voice. We can hear somebody's um, speaking. So that's what we are trained to do. We can hear things like a siren going off. Um, it's because of our part of our survival that we hear, we are, we're trained to focus on those things that really um, it's going to matter the most to our survival, um, like immediate survival. Whereas things that are like beyond our range, normal range of hearing, we still hear them, we just screen them out. And um, actually I can, I'm clear audience, I'm, I'm much more clear audience than I am clairvoyant. I can see things, but I really have to pay attention if I want to see. However, with Clear audience, I just have to relax and I'll be able to hear things that other people can't hear. I sometimes I hear music. I, I remember one time a friend of mine sent me a, uh, a channeled book. And when I got the book and I was just, you know, taking it out to, to read it, I actually hear um, this message that came from the entity that, uh, that my chant that, that allowed my friend to channel this and, and be the vessel to channel that book. So, so that's something that um, maybe not everybody here, but I have a fairly clean sense of clear audience. So um, being able to taste energy, not just, you know, solid, not just to taste a piece of chicken or ice cream, but being able to taste something that is not there, that's just energy. So that is, so that is called um, clear gustant and clear, um, this is called clear alliant. I'm not sure if my pronunciation is, is, a, is good, but clear alliant is really being able to smell. So um, I, I can, I um, have, I wouldn't say a keen sense of being able to smell energy, but I do notice that the um, certain entities or my, some of my guides, when I when they are around me, I can smell a, scent, a certain scent that is just unique to them. And I remember I've tried to ask other people, do you smell that? No one else can smell what I smell. And I, I one time I asked uh, Sifu James about it, and you said, oh, you're just smelling your, um, they are your guides. That's why you pick up the scent. So that is clear alliant is really being able to smell certain scents that, um, that is not commonly being able to pick up by other people. And then there is also something that is called um, clear tangent. 
So there are people that if you give them a piece of clothing, they can just um, touch that piece of clothing and be able to tell you something about the owner of that piece of clothing. So that is really through the sense of touch. They pick up information that most people don't pick up when they touch some things. So that's clear tangent. And um, besides clear tangent, there's also something that's called clear sentient. A lot of us are actually very fairly clear sentient. Like we don't know that, but actually clear sentient is being able to feel other people's feelings. So most of us are clear sentient. It's it's like it's a gut feeling, for example, like like when you when you say, oh, it's a gut feeling. I just know this. I know that he's happy. I know that, you know, something about that. So that really is clear sentient. Most, most people don't even know that. And we, we think of gut feeling is something that is, you know, what is a gut feeling? It, it is our, um, one of the way that we pick up a subtle energy and be able to interpret it in such a way. So, and then um, one more I want to talk about is really clear cognizant. So clear cognizant is being able to know things because we like we, how do we get knowledge? Like we hear it from other people, somebody tell us something or we um, read a book and we know, we know certain things, but being able to just set an intention to, let's say, I want to um, find out what's happening on, um, let's say, what, what's happening tomorrow. Because for example, if you, if you um, have ordered a package and you just want to know when is it going to arrive, then you don't know because the, um, the, um, the company that you usually, uh, they can't tell you precisely when the postman is going to um, deliver them, deliver that item to you. But you, if you want to, you can actually get that knowledge. Um, so that's clear cognizant is to know things, but just through tapping into the energy of that. So, so why why is clear cognizant? Uh, why are the clairs so important? Um, and um, is that we, like, we've been through a, a period of time, meaning in the last, I, at least, you know, a couple of thousand years, we've been very cut off from these, these uh, six cents, because um, it used to be that we are much more um, clairvoyant, we can, we are much more in tune with these um, subtle energies, but the last, uh, I, I think because of the emphasis on material things, so materialism, that the, the, is, is really part of the, the reason why we, we so focus on things, on matter, on things that we can actually touch and see that we um, have de-evolved to getting to be less and less able to um, tap into that part of ourselves. So that's one of the reasons. And the reasons why this these abilities is actually becoming more um, prevalent now is actually much easier to to start to or um, get all of these six sense abilities back is because the energy of the planet is getting to be so strong now you really have to um, decide make a decision to not grow those uh, your six sense to um, to actually keep those sense from those six sense from, from coming back. And I actually want to um, talk about one thing. It's called psionics. So what is psionics? 
the ability. So psionics is really the study of the practical use of psychic powers. Psionic is um, why do we need to um, have that ability? I remember uh, this, like even from from past workshops, uh, Super James have have um, shared these um, stories with us. One of them was that he, um, like usually his boss would uh, invite him to certain to meetings because his boss knows that he has an ability to be able to get his um, points, his ideas across. And he shared with us how he does it, is that before the meeting starts, so when he first um, like come into the meeting room, he would shake everybody's hand and say certain words to them to, to actually give them the suggestion to pay attention to what he's saying. So he actually does that. And that is part of psionics. That's really part of um, knowing to using his own psychic abilities to um, kind of anchor in a suggestion in somebody's mind to pay attention to him. And this ability is, of course, it, it, it's, it's very practical in that you actually um, can get other people to pay attention to what you're, you're doing. And also as a healer, or if somebody who wants to do healing, so um, an energy healer, what, what do you think energy healing is? I think in the old days, we think of energy healing is that we, that the healer would use their energy and they send it to the other person and the other person um, would be able to, because of their energy, they can actually, the energy is so much so that it actually heals the other person. But that's really the old way of using energy healing. The, actually what happens is, Actually, the, the more, um, I would say, the more enlightened way of doing energy healing is really to, to using your mental power, using your psychic power to send, to connect with the other person who may be in the same room or maybe in a completely different continent from you, far away from you. Send, and send a suggestion to that person and, um, and that person can pick that, would be able to pick that um, suggestion up. And it really is up to that person's consciousness whether they want to um, comply with that or not, because it's always the other person that heals themselves. It's just that most people don't know or don't even acknowledge that they are actually the one that is healing themselves. They think that it is this medication that is healing. What is medication? It's simply energy, simply a message, simply information. So even taking physical medication is only that, is simply to take in information. So if you can put in information and send it to someone else as a suggestion, then that really is a practical way of using your psychic power. So that's why the, um, the psionics is, is, is more and more being studied and um, recognized and also a lot more people wanted to develop it. It's, if you just go online, there's actually a lot of courses that is teaching you how to develop your intuition. Why? Because we can now, the energy is so high, so much easier to, and it's actually, um, people are so much more open to um, being able to tap into our intuition. So I actually just want to stop here for a moment and just ask for feedback questions.
Can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Go ahead. You're going to laugh at my question. Uh, I'm going to have a job interview tomorrow. So can I send my interviewer uh, my wish that I want this and this amount of money and I want you to hire me for this and this? Can I, can I do that? Is it possible that she gonna receive my wish like it's your own? Yes, you can. You can, however, it depends. It depends how strong your ability is. And also um, the other thing is, um, is it a win-win situation? You have to think about that too. Because if you, um, is if you, we're talking about um, ethics now. If you create a situation where it's not a win-win situation, then you're going to create a situation where um, it will come back to, so you have to pay for it in some other ways. So, so yes, but. so the answer is yes, but can you do it to, right tomorrow? It depends on how keen you are and how, um, how much you actually want to do that. And also you really, um, so what is your intention? Are you, do you want a certain amount of money? Because so yes, what is the, what is the intention behind it? Yes, I want certain amount of money. And of course I'm ready to give the best out of me as well. The best service, mm -hmm. uh, everything's the best. But I do want to have certain amount of money, of course. Okay. In that case, send that intention. Okay, I will. So, so when you like, um, I, I would really suggest that you know we're going to do some um, clearing this evening. So for yourself, um, in addition to the clearing that I'm going to do with you this evening, is you also, in addition, put in clearing for. Let's say you want to clear away any um, limitations on your abundance. You want to clear away any um, doubt about your own abilities because you are a great aesthetician. We all know that. But do you have any doubts about yourself? Then when you clear away those things, then um, and, and, and you really are prepared to make this a win-win situation then like do the clearing clear away any doubts uh, about yourself your own abilities clear away um, those things and and then also um when you when you go into you know when you meet somebody you of course to shake their person you just um, so what seafood does is he send through um, through you know, shaking hands is, is then your particle, one of your particle is already with them. So you send the particle to them and within the particle, the intention is that you want this amount of money. So just, just it's gonna be phone interview through the phone. Okay. Then when, so, so then um, when you see a person, because when you, that's when you connect with that person, when you see the person, when you first connect with them, so you mentally send a particle over to that person because you can. You are a powerful being, so you know how to send a particle 
because you have trillions of particles with that is a part of you. So you just send one particle. You just that. imagine, right, that you're sending this particle. You just imagine that you, you know something coming command. from me to her. So you just say the command, you know, quietly in, within your own mind that I'm sending a. Don't imagine, actually command that you send a particle over to them. I see. Thank okay. you. So don't imagine it is for real. You are actually sending a particle over to them. And within the particle, you set the intention that you want. Um, so you want whatever it is that's best for both parties. If, if, if you are the right fit, you want them to know that they that it is the right fit. So all of that intention. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Other questions? Yes, I have a question actually. It's a little late on the question, but it's at the beginning. You talked about the soul, the soul maybe not always being um, sort of wandering away. Uh, and I was just wondering, is that sort of a, a normal thing for a soul to do under most circumstances? Like how often would the soul be sort of, or, or do you have to embody your soul in order to sort of like have it, have it present when you want it to be present? It, um, it really depends on the person. So for, a lot of us, when we're sleeping, our soul just, you know, goes off. <laughs> and also, if you're doing something that does not require your, does not require or does not engage your attention, then your soul would be yeah, going off and say, and say, ah, oh, this, this, this um, Winnie is just fooling around. I am going to go away and. And you know, whenever he wakes, whenever she wakes up, and you know, decided to um, get serious, then we'll come back. So yes, your soul does do that. So, and um, yeah, your soul does do that. If you are doing something that's boring, and you and you're doing it day in day out, I say, if you if you if you go for a job that you don't like, then um, and you really uh, you know you're really a trooper, you want to keep going to the job that you don't like, then your soul is like, eh, I'm going to take a break today because, you know, it's, it's not something that is going to require my attention anyway. So yeah, your soul would, you know, go off on a vacation or somewhere. I mean, it, it may, may not be the whole day it will go off. Maybe it will just go off for an hour and okay. come back. So, so yes, your soul can. And um, yeah, so that can happen. So the more focused you are, the more your soul is present? The more you are walking your path, the more that you are doing things that you, um, your soul uh, actually come here to do, then your soul would take around more. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. For, for example, like um when I go to Sifu's workshop, my soul is very present <laughs> because this is what I'm I'm really interested in. So for those of us who are interested in energy and, and really in learning more about energy, yes, your soul is gonna stick around. Okay. So it's when you're doing your passion. Yeah, when you're doing your passion, when you're doing things that you your soul um, puts you on earth to do, then it's going to stick around more. Okay. You're okay. lucky because your passion is very clear to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. My mind is so clear. <laughs> um, it's okay. So it actually, um, 
yeah, we're going to talk about how how you can get clear. We, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, other questions, comments? Okay. So let me go back. Sorry, one oh. minute. Uh, sure. Sorry. You said something for to Tatiana that it can be good or it can be bad. Uh, so in what way would it be or the other way or something? I am not sure the context. What what is good or bad? What what are you referring to? You kind of inferred that it can go either way. What uh, can go what, either what, way? What what what's her intention? I still like don't if, understand your question. If she, if she wants to manifest that, uh, you kind of said that. Oh, okay. Can, uh, so um, when the energy is high, if we are not in, uh, when, like, if we don't have the, um, like everybody's highest interest, if I'm just, you know, I'm out for myself, and I want this money. I don't care about other people. I just want, just give me, give me, give me. If you go in this kind of mentality, then the universe is gonna slap you around for sure. So that's what I mean is you like, if you have the intent that I know that like I, like in Tatiana's case, she's passionate about what she's doing. And she does her best. So I have no doubt that she is willing to work for it. So then it's, so for her, there is this, so she has to be in that frame of mind that is win-win. So that means um, she will get what she wants and she will be able to make sure that the other person's, um, their interest is also and also like all the clients that go to her, they would be happy as well. So that's what I mean by win-win situation. But if somebody go in and they only in it for themselves, I want to be paid the most while I give the least, if any at all, then that's not a win-win situation. The, um, in the current kind of um, energies, this kind of mentality will not um, get you very far. Yeah, like you will get slapped around. You like they will come back to you very quickly. So that's what I mean by. Is that is that um, correct? Is that understood? Yeah. Yeah, so, intention should be pure. In other words, yes. Like, so your yeah. only intention from the heart. Is pure. Yeah. If you do it from the heart, then no, no problem. The universe will support you. That's right. Thank if, you. If it is also what the other person wants as well. Right. So, so it's always a win-win situation now. Okay. So, so yeah. one more question. If a healer, um, if, if you have a healer and they're not necessarily, um, passionate about being a healer is that going to impair your ability to get well that's hard to say they don't have to be passionate about healing but they have to really um come from love because what heals love so they have to they have to be passionate about serving you. Okay. So I think okay. and and so I think that is really um yeah they they may not be passionate about the like, healing, but they have to really come from like, service. So okay, not just being it for the money or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Okay, in that case, I will carry on.
Let's go back to, so, um, okay. So these are the clairs. So why are we not all psychics? Because um, we, like all these six senses actually innate within us is very much, we are all born with it. It is just that it's our belief system because we've you know, like the last couple of thousand years and there is so much emphasis on matter, on materialism. And especially the last hundred years, it, it's been very material. We, we want to, you know, uh, have things, we, we, um, we want to have things, own things, rather than have experiences. So that's what I mean by materialism, is we emphasis on matter, emphasis on things that we can touch, see in those things. And also because there's a lot of, um, not all religion, I would say some religion, especially um, Christ, uh, Christian, uh, Judeo-Christian. So that is, there's a lot of, um, some of the religion, they think of that if you have the ability to heal other people or if you ability to interact with subtle energy, then it does not come from God. It comes from Satan. So from comes from the bad side. So that's a lot of um, that kind of manipulation. So a lot of it is really religion and also um, uh, there's witch hunts and there's holy wars that's being fought. So all of that. So there's a lot of beliefs that go against us from being able to focus on developing our six senses. And um, part of it is, is really, um, I would say, I, I wouldn't say that it is a bad thing, but I think collectively, collectively we, we actually um, wanted to have that experience. We, we wanted to focus on um, matter. We want to have this experience of being disconnected with our own ability. So that's why all of these things came about to support us to have that experience. And if that's done, that's over and done with. We're, we're actually in transition to a very different energy where um, our six senses, our abilities are heightened and also very welcomed. And there's a lot more support of that in the new energy to come. Oh, actually not to come. It's already here. It's just gonna get more and more. Um, so we can, more and more people will feel that. The energy is already here that supports human beings being a lot more powerful than what we have been so far. And some of the other things is um, also fear because our bodies has our, our physical bodies like like what do they do to people in that don't um, that you know go against the um, beliefs of the religion um, of the church they get excommunicated and in the olden days if you excommunicated you know you Nobody would, would want to um, be in touch with you. It's, it's like death or similar to death. So there's a lot of fear being instilled in us and a lot of trauma to our physical body as well because um, we, we've been burned. Some of us who have been accused of be, like working with uh, witchcraft and all of those things, it may or may not be um, legitimate. Maybe it's just a somebody who you know don't like this person, so they spread a rumor. So it may be completely unfound. So all of these things actually create trauma in our physical body, and the physical body remembers from. So 
it's a lot of it is past life experience of being persecuted because of our beliefs, because of our abilities. We still have that memory within our unconscious mind. And so all of those things have kind of um, contributed to our abilities to um, be able to develop these, these, our six senses properly. And one more reason that I can think of is overstimulation. There's so many sounds, like I live in a city, there's so many sounds that's going on. So when all of these sound is kind of um, distracting you from your own um, clear audience abilities, how can you focus on like, developing your clear audience ability if there is so much sound? So expecting, like because there are some people who you know have a boom box around and when they drive around the car, the the, um, the the stereo is on so loud they can't hear anything they can't even hear themselves talk sometimes you know how how would would they be able to develop the ability to hear subtle energy because subtle energy really requires us to pay attention to it to develop those abilities so overstimulation of our senses so those are some of the things that we that is the reasons why we are not all psychics already. And how do we get back our um, psychic abilities is really to look at all those beliefs and all those trauma and all those fear-based um, programs and to you know, start to reverse those within ourselves. So we we'll talk more about specific uh, or some other uh, um, uh, practices that you can do in order to, if you wish to develop your six senses to be able to do that. So today I actually just want to focus on releasing programs, our beliefs, to working working on our beliefs first. So it's it's um, actually very. It's kind of a, 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 a lucky coincidence that this past weekend, Sifu James taught us how to release programs, release past life programs as well. So that's, that's what I want to talk about next is really um, how do we release all those past life programs or even uh, programs within this life that is preventing us from being able to develop our six senses. So first off is beliefs. So some of the beliefs that we really need to um, get back into us is, is that we are creators. We've been taught that we are powerless for such a long time, for mm, so many thousands of years. We've been dumbed down and, and really um, disconnected from our own power that we don't even remember that we are creators anymore. And so some of the beliefs, the, 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 the supportive beliefs that we really have to um, get back into if we want to kind of um, jumpstart uh, the ability that we have to develop our six senses is to understand that we are creators. We are powerful. We can create anything. We have all the frequencies within us and we can connect with anything. We can connect with God. We can connect with Buddha. We can connect with like, all the different um, the different dimensions. We have that ability to connect to anything that we want. So first off is to really get in to our um, being that we are creators and we are powerful. So all of this first. 
So these are the new beliefs that we have to embrace, or I would highly suggest that you embrace, even if you don't want to create or, or to develop your six senses. These are beliefs that um, will strengthen you as a like as a as a person, as a being, to really understand that we are all of this. And then the other thing is really to understand um, what are some of the, the programs that blocks us. So there are past life programs, programs meaning thought forms, so or beliefs. So that's what I mean by programs. So beliefs, thought forms that we kind of um, subscribe to. So past life. It could be something that is from past life. And it, however, it can also be um, programs, beliefs that we adopt from this present life. And then there are beliefs that are called, that are like not mind beliefs. What do I mean by that? Is that, for example, you, you hear it on the, um, on the, the, the TV that, oh, this, this is flu season. So you're going to get sick. I mean, that is, <laughs> that's just a bunch of crap. <laughs> you have an immune system that is, if you, your immune system is, is healthy and you have a healthy lifestyle and you treat your body well, I don't care what, what season it is, you will not get sick because, you know, you are, unless you, you know, listen to this and you believe it, then it becomes your belief and your program. So, so that's what I mean by not mind blockages or not mind programs. It's, it's not mine. It's just that I hear it from someone else or some, some um, other um, organizations that you know put out um, this thing so there's a lot of not mind blockages we all think that you know for example um, when you get married you buy a diamond ring for your wife that's also a belief that is a uh, a program it's devised by people who wants to sell you jewelry so they say they they kind of link that, you know, if you want to show that you really want to, you really commit it to somebody, you buy them a nice rock. That's just a bunch of baloney. You don't need that. I mean, you can choose that, but you don't need it. It's, it, it may not be your program. However, if everybody around you believes that and you somehow think that, oh, everybody thinks that so it must be true and so you take it on then it becomes yours so that's what I mean by not mine programs so my blockages so my programs programs that's preventing me from being from being able to develop my six senses that's what I mean it could be so those could be created by trauma and then um so, and then there are programs that are meaningful to my path. So let's say my path is to be a, um, a healer, then anything, any programs um, that is related to my path that I have, to, that I want to, that I'm interested in something, that I love um, energy, I love to play with energy, I, I, like energy makes me happy. So, so that's, those are programs, those are belief, thought patterns, but it is meaningful to my path. So I am not going to delete those. However, there are beliefs that are not meaningful to my path. So those are the ones that I can release. So these are some of the, the programs that we will be working with. So how do we clear the blockages? How do we clear the blockages? It's actually 
Um, so let me just stop this. So it's actually very easy, very simple. How to create is we connect to an energy source that is powerful enough. So you know, usually when we are, um, like if I'm sitting now, unless I am really have really trained myself to always maintain a certain frequency, I haven't done that. I'm not that disciplined yet. That's the, that's something, that's a growth point that I, so if I, however, I know that when I want to release something, then first I have to connect to a power source. It's like, if you want to, um, use if you if I want to let's say use my microphone I have to put it I have to plug it in first in order to have a power source first in order for it to work so the same thing with releasing programs is I have to plug into a um, a source of energy that is so high that it can actually disperse the, the programs. So what source of energy that is high enough to do that is really source energy, meaning pure love. Pure love energy is when we are really tapped into pure love, we are really, um, the more we put ourselves in pure love, the more we surround ourselves with in pure love, the less any of these programs would be able to exist because these programs um, does not really resonate with, with the, the pure love program, with the pure love energy. So pure love. And so what Sifu Jane says has taught us this weekend is that it's not just pure love from source. So Pure love is really more for um, spiritual growth and to work with spiritual energy. There's also, but because we are also human, so we need something kind of like love, but it's more connected to earth. So it's really an earth love energy. And that energy is 0 0.01 energy. So, so today we're gonna, so that's what I mean by um, the earth energy is really the 0 0.01 energy. It's, it's really from earth, but it is the love energy from earth. So when we have both the energy from the universe, which is pure love and energy from earth, and they're both coherent and together, running together, then that really gives us a powerful source of energy to be able to disperse and release any programs that we set our intention to let go of. So that really is, is as simple as that. We connect to a powerful source of energy. We set the intention of what it is that we want to release. Do we want to release past life energy? Do we want to release current life energy that is not related to my life path. So what, so the intention have energy source, intention, and then just kind of activate this. So that's how simple it is. And uh, so I just want to, um, so step-by-step, step, this is really the step is, Pure love energy activate, breathe in. So what do I mean by that? Is pure love energy is coming in through the top of our head. So as you breathe in, you give the command, pure love energy activate. You and actually um, feel this pure love energy coming in as you breathe in, coming into your body until it kind of reaches the, the, the um, your sacral area, which is around the, the, the base of your body. Then you, on the out breath, when, as you breathe out, 
you activate the 0 0.01 energy, which is Earth. So the energy, Earth energy comes in through your base. So your sole of your soles of your feet coming into the, the base of your spine, going up towards the top of your head. So you do a few of this, and then you have both the pure love and so energy from the universe and energy from earth being coherent. So you activate that coherence. And you do this for just maybe, if you're not doing past life, then you just do this for maybe two or three minutes, then you would have enough of this energy. For past life though, you want to do it for longer. So recommendation is to do it for 10 minutes and then set out the intention that you want to, what do you want to let go of? So have that intention. And then all you have to do is just have that intention, breathe in, breathe out, and that's all it takes. And once you let go of the, 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 the programs, then you set the last thing is you have this next intention is that all of your layers are because we within our body we have different layers. Um, Sifu James mentioned that we can actually or the human um, can actually detect that there are seven layers of energies that is beyond our physical body. And beyond this, the, the seventh layer, we can't really um, interact with it too much yet. So when you make your, the boundaries of your layers strong, it actually keeps the energy uh, or other um, energy that does not support you keeps it from being able to come back. So that's why the last thing to do after you release the, the programs is that all the layers boundaries are strong. So you, so you activate to this, okay? And then that's it. Um, so what are some of the intentions? So the intentions could be all not mine programs release activate. So that can be an intention or all not meaningful to my path programs release activate. So these are really the intentions or the commands you can give to yourself when you do the release. And you can do for past life, all past life programs in central line release activate. So what do I mean by um, central line? Central line is as source energy, we have a connection with our soul, with our higher self as well. And that's all in, in our central line. That's where our um, crown chakra is. So central line is, and it's, there's this, this prana tube that is within our body. So that's what I mean by the central line. So when we do the brief in, brief out of um, universal and earth energy, we, we power up, we become so, um, our energy becomes so high is that the, the programs that are within us, within our body, it starts to float up. So float up <clears throat> and it, it kind of gets up to, to be um, beyond our body. <clears throat> so when it is beyond our body, there are some programs that would be in the middle in this, in this uh, central um, line. And because they are in the middle, they will block us. They, they kind of create a block between how our energy would be able to receive information and communication from our highest vibration self and from our soul. 
So that's why it's, it's really most important to pre to um, clear the, the programs or the thought forms that is kind of in the middle line. So that's that's what that is. Okay, so that's 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 all we do. So I just want to open up for questions. Could you go back to the slide with the intentions for a minute? I didn't. I didn't get an opportunity to to get that. Sure. Please. I can. I can send out the slides to you too, so you, you actually don't need to. Yeah. Copy can you it. send it to me too, please? With yeah. Me, I can me. send out the yeah. slides to you guys. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> and you can make up your own because you can have any intentions. You can make up your own. Draga was raised a hand. I saw that. Oh, the last slide I liked how to go through this clearing process because I missed on Sunday. So I thought if you could send that to me, please, or I'll just take a picture. But yeah, I don't worry, I, I will send it out. And um, uh -huh. the 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 meditation I'm doing with you today is all about that as well. So okay. Any other questions? I actually skipped out a lot because, you know, this Sifu spent two days <laughs> explaining this. And now I actually just, you know, summarize it in 10 minutes. So it's there's a lot that I've left out. <clears throat> so just, just, you know. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, this is something that we understand. We may be clearing um, a program again and again and again and again as it, because it's so embedded. And we have to first recognize when the program is being act, act, you know, triggered or, or it's acting in us. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so that's why uh, the, you have to set the intention that you want to clear the program from your brain, from your heart and from your gut, because we have all these different centers within our body. And if you only clear it from your brain, your heart has a copy of that program. So your heart would send it back to your brain. Okay. So when you clear something, just hold the intention that you're gonna clear it from your brain, your heart and your gut. Okay. So these three. Centers. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Um, the last one, it was all the layers, boundaries are strong, you said, to activate the layers of boundaries. Mm -hmm. So it's all that energies are not support, they not support me. Um, so I just have to mention what energy, what I feel that doesn't support me, and then give the command, um, all these ba uh, boundaries activate, or what should I do? So the last command is really um, to, so let's say we have an emotional body we have a mental body so we well, let, let me try to find so we have um we have we have etheric we have um i forgot the names of all the layers but we have emotional body we have mental body we have spiritual body we have um cosmic body i may be making things up but anyway so there are all together seven layers so, and when we, so this command is to, is that once we have cleared the programs from our body is to make sure that our boundaries for each of those layers are strong again. So that's what that is. Mm, I got it. When the Whatever we clear already. Yeah. Make that layers. Yeah. So so you don't have to so so 
So all the other, um, so you just clear. And then the last command is that all the, the, the boundaries of all the layers to be strong and activate. So that's the last one. Thank so that, you. Would, that would allow you to strengthen your own boundaries, the, the boundaries between the layers. So, so that then, because each one, you have seven layers, so each one of those layers boundaries are strong then anything that is coming from outside of you, they would have to go through like those seven layers in order to actually, like they would have to be strong enough to penetrate all those seven layers of strong boundaries before they can get to you. So that's that's what that's why it's uh, it's a good thing to strengthen your boundaries, so to make it harder for anything. That you that does not support you to come back in again. Now I understand. Thank you, Vini. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions, comments? Okay, everybody. Um. Okay, good. Then we can do the um. <clears throat> the um. Meditation to clear. Um, so what I intend to do, hang on, um, actually, actually, let me um, 